I'm looking forward to making a chime with you and it'll pull the material properties and the cross-sectional properties into the equations. So we'll be able to give it a frequency and it'll rebuild to the appropriate length. So I'll start with a sketch. I'm gonna make these close, but not exact. And I'm uh, just going to make it up one foot long to get started. I'm also going to give it a material. Uh, this is going to be an EMT metal chime, so we'll apply some galvanized steel. We'll pull the Young's modulus and the density into the calculations. So first, I'll start with adding the outer diameter and the inner diameter as parameters. And I will pull those from the um, electrical metal tubing website. We typically stick with three quarter inch EMT, which has an inside diameter of 0.824 and outside diameter of 0.922. And we'll apply those onto the sketch. I can regenerate the model and see that those have updated. Okay. Next thing we'll do is calculate the moment of inertia and the area from the cross-sectional area. We'll save it as a feature. I want to save the cross-sectional area and one of the moments of inertia. Because this is centrally located and it's a circle, the moments of inertia are the same, whether we use I1, I2, IXX, IYY, they should be the same. So we can just pick the first one. So those features will live in this analysis. And now we can add some more relations. I've added relations to my ribbon here. Normally it lives under model intent. We'll create a parameter called A and set that equal to the section property cross-sectional area, which you can find if you filter by current in all sublevels. I'll create parameter i which is based on the moment of inertia I'll create a parameter e which will pull from the material by assigning the galvanized steel we'll pull the modulus of elasticity or the Young's modulus in same way There we go, Young's modulus. And rho for the density. So this is pretty powerful to be able to take these cross-sectional areas and properties and material properties and pull them all into this equation. So the equation 
2 pi f equals 22.373 over L squared times the square root of EI over rho A. Um, I like to break this down into pieces. So the EI over rho A, I'll call that F1. Uh, actually, I'll add a comment. Okay, um, the next one we're going to do is reorganize this so that L comes over to this side, 2 pi f is in the denominator, and we'll take the square root of all of this. Uh, and we'll see that there's an issue because I don't have a frequency yet. So 2 times pi times f. I have to create the frequency um, before this will work. So if I verify it's not going to work. So I need to we can start with 440 which is um, an A4. I give this a description as the input frequency. So F1 is under the square root sign. F2 is reorganized and it's in front of the square root sign. So we can calculate L, the length, as the square root of F2 times the square root of F1. And we get the length as being about 22 and a half inches long, which passes my gut check. Ah, so I accept the length. I just calculated the length. I hit regenerate, but nothing happened. And that's because we did not go into the extrude and set that 12 inches to be L. So if we type in L, we can create a part level relation and now we have that going the entire length. Okay, the last thing to do is add the hang position holes. So we can create an extrude on the front plane. Where the length from the hole to the end is 0.225 times L. This will create a sketch relation, not a part relation, so just be aware of that. Um, we can mirror it either in as a part or as a sketch. Um, I'm going to mirror it here. So I'm going to select geometry and mirror it over the center. And that can be a two-sided through all. Now, if I change the material to copper, if I change the inside diameter and the outside diameter, the density, the Young's modulus, the moment of inertia, the area, those will all update. Um, the last thing we could do is make it a little easier to change the frequency and the length. One way to do that is to use um, an annotation. So we'll say flat to screen. We'll add a note. Okay. We're going to have um, the frequency equals, and I'm going to include the ampersand f, and that'll bring in the parameter of the frequency. And I don't need this to have like a lot of decimal places. Um, so I'm going to say square brackets dot zero square brackets. 
and then I'll say the length and I'll bring in the parameter for the length and we'll just have one decimal place here. Okay, so that looks great. It gives us a little piece of information. The reason I said it becomes kind of a um, user input dashboard is if I double click on that frequency and I make it 880 and then regenerate the model, right? The length has changed to update to that new note. And if I find, let's see, our G4 is 392. Control G to regenerate. Um, that's a wavelength, that's not length. But um, our updated length for the chime is 23.8 inches. So I hope that's helpful.